Hi everyone, welcome back to the channel. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Lizzie Birch and on this channel we talk about discipling kingdom leaders. So if that sounds like something that God might be calling you to, to, to lead others to Christ, then hopefully this will be helpful for you. So please stick around. And also I'd like to encourage everyone to try to stick around to the very end of this video. At the end, I'm going to be offering something to you guys that's coming up pretty soon. Um, It'll be an interactive thing that you guys can get involved with. So stick around to the end so I can share more details about that with you there. But before we do anything else, let's um, get started with talking about this Bible story for today and how it applies to us. So let's dive in with a word of prayer first and then we'll get into the Bible story. All right, dear Jesus, thank you so much for what you're about to share with us in this Bible story. Lord, thank you for your wisdom, for your words, and for your peace that passes all understanding. We pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, so for most of you guys, you've actually come across my channel through one particular video. Um, there's two, <laughs> two videos on this channel that are what you might call trending. Um, and they're in their thousands of views, so most of my viewers have at least seen those two videos. And the very first one was the one that I did about two years ago. It was the very first video I ever put on this channel, and um, I felt very led by God to place that there as, as vulnerable as it felt to do this one. It was the one about Isaac and Rebecca, kingdom marriage, prophetic word, that one. Most of you guys would remember it, and if you haven't seen it, or if you haven't seen it for a little while, um, there should be a link below, so you can click on that one and go check it out. So, why I'm talking about this one in particular is because this story of Isaac and Rebecca, it's been on my mind a little bit recently, and I've been in conversation with um, some friends about it, and as the years have progressed, I'm, I put that video up about two years ago, as time has gone on, and as I have personally been going through this journey with God of waiting for kingdom marriage, which I talked a little bit about in my other <laughs> trending video. Um, I've personally grown a lot and I've experienced a lot and I've, I've just really learned a lot about what God is doing, about God's character, about the kind of character that I personally need to develop. And so there's been a lot of learning that's happened in the past couple of years and in the past four years of going on this journey with God. So, um, since that video, I was chatting to a friend recently and he pointed out that there was a few points that I hadn't originally picked up on in, in that story in Genesis chapter 24. And I'd like to share with you guys some of those points right now that I didn't pick up on back then. And it actually took a friend of mine to point them out to me more recently about some things that we all might've missed. So... Without any further ado, let's have a look at some of these points. Um, a little bit of backstory quickly. So, in a very quick nutshell, basically Abraham's super old. He's, you know, his wife's just died. He wants Isaac to get a wife um, so that they can be married, they can produce more offspring, so that they can create this, this great nation that God has promised them, and so that the promised, um, you know, so Jesus who was promised to come through Abraham's line, he could be born eventually at some point down the line. And yeah, so for God's will to be accomplished in the earth, Abraham knew that his son Isaac needed a wife. But at the same time, he wasn't allowed to have a wife from the land of Canaan. But at the same time, Isaac shouldn't go back to the land which they had come from previously, because then he'd stay there. He wouldn't come back to Canaan. He'd get stuck there with this new wife. And so he had to stay put in the land of Canaan, Isaac. And so Abraham sends off his servant, go and get Isaac a godly wife from one of my relatives, bring her back here. If she won't come, like we'll figure something else out down the track, you'll be released from the oath. And so this godly um, servant of Abraham goes, has a miraculous experience and within about 12 hours he's you know turned back he's coming back with Rebecca on his heels and Rebecca marries Isaac Isaac's about 40 years old at this point um we don't really know how old Rebecca is she might be a teenager or in her 20s or she might be 40 like I guess that's possible um but it's a bit unlikely for a young woman to remain unmarried, especially as beautiful as she was and, and from the kind of family she was, it would have been pretty unlikely that she stayed unmarried 
till she was 40. Um, that's just my perspective on it anyway. So we're probably going to guess that she's a little bit younger than, <laughs> than Isaac in this, but that doesn't really matter. So some of the things that I pointed out in the previous video was there was a lot of swiftness. There was this sense of urgency going on in that story. And we see, you know, Abraham sending the servant, the servant getting there as quickly as possible. He's like on a mission. He prays this thing to God. God answers him immediately. And Rebecca's right there. And she's doing all the things that, you know, the servant had prayed for as a sign. And then she's running back to um, tell her family about this guy. And, and then like within a, about a 12 hour span from meeting this guy at the well, she's now saying, yep, sure, I'm going to marry this guy's master's son you know hundreds of kilometers away i've never met him but sure let's go and they leave that next morning so everything is happening super super quickly and then even when she gets back um and meets isaac like he takes her straight to the tent and they get married essentially immediately so there's so much happening that is quick and yet there are also some things in this story that are happening a bit more slowly um the thing that was pointed out to me a bit recently was the period of time that it took um, for the camels to get from A to B was, it was at least a couple of weeks or a couple of months. Like I haven't done all the maths, but it would have taken a fair while. And since this is a prophetic word, we need to look at some of the elements in a more prophetic way, as we did in the previous video, um, where there's this sense of things happening quite quickly when they do happen, but then there are also spans of time <laughs> that are going to take their time. And I've been learning this in this process. I have not been enjoying the long periods of waiting, but you know what? They have taught me patience and patience is a really, really important thing to be learning, especially when you're going to go into a marriage, right? So something that I feel like <laughs> God has been producing in my life in this long period of waiting while the camels in the story are walking from, you know, the south part of the land of Israel, as it would become known, to, you know, way up north where this this family of Rebecca lives. It would have been quite a while for the camels to get there and then quite a while to come back again. And so there's these long periods of waiting while, you know, Isaac is waiting for, oh, I'm going to get a wife sometime soon. I don't know how long that's going to take. It's it's a little bit quicker than he anticipated, but still there was waiting involved for him. And it actually was twice as long for him to wait than it was for Rebecca. Cause you know, um, Isaac is waiting already 40 years. He's 40 years old. He's like, I'm an old man at this point. Basically he's in, he's in his midlife essentially. Um, and it was his dad's responsibility to give him a wife. So, um, it's not like he could just go out and pick one for himself in the meantime when he was good and ready. Um, so he's been waiting 40 years for his dad to get around to give him a wife. And then now he's waiting these last couple of months of the camels have gone off in that direction. Now I'm just going to wait for them to come back here. And that waiting period was twice as long for him, at least in that last section where he's like, all right, the camels are heading off. I'm going to wave them goodbye. They head in that direction for a particular period of time. And then it takes that same amount of time back. So Rebecca, she's coming back. She's waiting to meet this future husband of hers. She's asking the servant, you know, what's he like? What am I getting myself into? Like I just said, yes, like very quickly. So what am I getting into now? And she's learning. She's waiting a little bit, but she's only waiting half as long in this process as Isaac did. Now this might have something to do with, you know, any of our stories, for example, like for me, I am pretty convinced of that. I know who I am waiting for. Um, and I have known this for about three years now. Um, but this guy, he might've only found out about me a little while ago or not yet or something. And so, um, for his end of the thing, it's probably going to be a lot shorter of a period of waiting as he goes through this process with God to, you know, have confirmation that I will be his wife. And it might be similar for some of you. Some of you might know who you're going to marry and then it might be a much shorter period of waiting for that other person. So there's that. 
But this is not the main point of the waiting period. So if we look at the whole lives of Isaac and of Rebecca up until this point, Isaac's 40. Like, what's he been doing for 40 years? What has God been doing in his life for 40 years? And what has he been doing in Rebecca's life for, let's say, for example, 20 years? If she's 20 years old, we don't know how old she is. Um, what is going on in their lives? What has God been doing? So some things that I really noticed about this story, which I think I touched on slightly, but I'd like to re-emphasize them here, is they're both growing in a few specific ways. They are serving God. Um, and we can see this by the kind of character that they've both developed. Um, in Isaac's life, we see in the very last verse of this chapter, is it the last one or no? So in verse 63, so right towards the end of Genesis chapter four, we see that Isaac went out to meditate in the field in the evening. So he's, he's going out basically to pray, to spend time with God. So he has this personal relationship that he's developed with God. His relationship with God is not based on, oh, my dad is Abraham. Abraham's had all these visions and experiences with God and all these types of things. No, he actually has a personal relationship with God. He's going and he's spending personal time in prayer and meditation and, and just building that relationship. And some things that we can see in Rebecca's life is she is serving God and she is also displaying godly character. When Eliezer comes um, to the well and she meets him there, his prayer is basically for a woman to display an enormous amount of hospitality um, and strength and energy and initiative and hospi yeah, hospitality, once again, like all of these things um, that a worldly person a godless person in those days or somebody who followed other gods perhaps wouldn't have had these qualities. She comes from a God-fearing family and she has been taught and she has personally developed to the point where she is taking the initiative and offering to serve another person. We see in the Bible many, many times that God wants us as Christians to be serving others and to going out of our way to show love and, and help other people, whether they are needy people or whether just, you know, in a moment of need, you know, it might not be like a huge thing, whatever it is, like to put ourselves aside and to put others first. And we see this character is developed in her life. And so for both of them, for Isaac and Rebecca, we see that they are serving God. Now, I want to stretch this analogy a little bit further for the prophetic idea that's coming through in this is what are you doing? What am I doing in this time of waiting? Are we serving God? Are we, you know, putting the gifts that God has given us to good use? Or are we developing in our character by engaging with God, being filled with the Holy Spirit and, you know, having the, the fruits of the Spirit and the gifts of the Spirit developing and, and coming through in our lives? Is that happening? Or or are we just staying stagnant? Are we, you know, not serving God, not engaging, not growing in these ways? So I really want to emphasize this idea that the time of being single, this is the big idea, okay? Listen to this. If you don't get anything else from this video, this is the big idea. The years of singleness are years to serve God and serve him more effectively. Because when we are married, we're going to need to have developed character, first of all, to go into this marriage, especially if God wants us to be in it. We want to stick it out for the long haul because even a kingdom marriage is going to have some challenges. It's just the way that <laughs> it is in the sinful world. We're going to have to deal with things and we're going to need to have this character that is developed before we get into it. And that character is developed while we are serving God. Um, something that I uh, was just revealed to me earlier is that marriage is not supposed to be this idol in our life. Um, even to the point that Jesus himself, with his own mouth, in the New Testament, said that there will not be marriage in heaven. Now, this is going to be a hard one to swallow, like, 
Sometimes I wonder, like, is that even real? And then I remember that Jesus said it. And I'm like, oh, I don't know what to do with that. I don't like that idea. I want to be married still in heaven. But this thing that came across um, a little bit earlier is that marriage is something to point us towards Jesus, right? God has given us this beautiful thing while we are living on this planet in this part of the, the history of the universe um, to show us the love of God, to point each other to the love of God. And it's this, this other centered thing. It's supposed to be showing us how to serve other people, serve each other and to raise a godly family. But what is more important than marriage is bringing people to a saving relationship with Jesus. So are you serving God by bringing other people into a saving relationship with Jesus? Are you doing the work of the gospel? If you are waiting until you get married to do your kingdom assignment and to do the work of the gospel, you're probably going to be waiting a long time, right? If you are not actively engaged in whatever calling God has on your life now before you get married, how can you ever expect to continue to do the work of the gospel when you get married, if you're not doing it now? How can you expect to be growing in the skills and in the gifts of the spirit that God has given you to use immediately as soon as you're given it? How can you expect this to be coming through in your marriage if you're not working on it now? Do not wait a moment longer to get started in the ministry and the calling that God has placed on your life. Don't wait until you get married for that to begin. This has kind of been an attitude that I've had at moments in the past, um, in the past few years, and I've been like looking forward to getting married so I can do my kingdom assignment. But you know what? God has given me my kingdom assignment right now, and I can do it with or without a husband. It will be great. I'm sure it will be in like increased and, and supported by being in a marriage, surely. But... I can do it quite effectively right now as is. And that is what God expects me to do. And that's what he expects you to do as well. Okay. So that is, this is the encouragement that I have for you guys. Like serve God while you are single, serve God while you have no other distractions. While this is the only thing that is a priority in your life. Okay. Paul talks about this in the New Testament. We're not going to get into all of that. I'm sure you've heard some verses about that. But just start now, whatever God has called you to do, start it now. Now, this is the first part of the message, <clears throat> and it, it has to do with kingdom assignments specifically. Now, I have a second part, and then we'll go into the offer at the end. Um, so in this second part, I'd like to just give you a bit of a warning, a bit of a caution uh, regarding going into a kingdom marriage. If we look at the lives of Isaac and Rebecca after the point of them getting married, it's a beautiful story. It's a miraculous story. It's God's will for them to be together. But over the years, we see some dysfunction coming through. And right at the very end, the whole family rips apart and it's really heartbreaking and it did not need to get to this point, right? We see this rivalry between Esau and Jacob and we see Rebecca manipulating and plotting to get the birthright to her favorite son and we see Isaac not wanting to go along with this idea of of Jacob getting the birthright and and him being kind of pretty set in in his plan to give the birthright to Esau because Esau was his favorite. So there was, there was favoritism going on. There was all sorts of things going on. And something that um, really jumped out at me is that Isaac and Rebecca had a responsibility, a few responsibilities, in fact, um, one of which was to continue while they were married to grow in communication skills um, they were required and they had this responsibility given to them by God, which they neglected. They neglected all of these responsibilities and this is how it turned out bad in the end. They were given the responsibility to have and to foster unity in marriage. So submitting to each other and to the will of God, right? So we see that there is 
this this favoritism there is this dysfunction there's you know husband and wife kind of plotting against each other's will you know it's it's really twisted and we see that god brought these two together but over the years things are not going well anymore marriage is going to be hard work for all of us marriage does take commitment um and commitment is this thing that not a lot of people especially in this generation don't seem to like and we need to be really committed if god is calling us to kingdom marriage if he's calling us to to serve him in any way we need to be committed marriage takes some skill and it takes development of those skills so i really want to encourage you guys that as soon as possible start working on some of these skills start working on relational intelligence emotional intelligence communication skills how to submit to one another in marriage by you know learning how to be other centered and put away your desires for your own selfish gain your own selfish wants and needs and put others before yourself these are just a few things that we can see that Isaac and Rebecca could have and absolutely should have been working on in their marriage um, and in their life together to have a much happier ending in their life and a happier story. We see that Jacob is sent away because his mother's like, oh no, my other son Esau, he's going to literally kill Jacob for what we've just done. Um, and she's like, I don't want my favorite son to get killed. So she sends him away. She's sneaky. She convinces um Isaac let's send him off to find a wife with my people and he goes along with that idea but then Jacob is gone for such a long time he's gone for like 20 years he actually never sees his mother ever again can you imagine the heartbreak that essentially Rebecca's plotting has brought upon herself and her like whole family we don't know or maybe I think I think Jacob does see his dad again before before Isaac dies um but he never sees his mother again and I'm imagining he's like a mummy's boy and he really wants to see her again um so these are just some of the really heartbreaking twisted things that come out of not stewarding a marriage well so whether you have just embarked on your journey of waiting for kingdom marriage and it's just begun and you don't know how long this is going to take or if you are at the point where you're about to or you've just gotten married or even if you've been married for a long time and you've never really heard of kingdom marriage before but you know you're a christian and you're married start working on these things start working on being intentional about having a good healthy godly marriage now wherever you're at this is something that i've personally been I guess focusing on to some degree over the past four years since God and I had this chat and I gave him my love life um yeah start working on it read books go see a counselor whatever it takes to start working through the issues that will impact your marriage um, and impact the world by you know if your marriage is not good then your sharing of the gospel is not going to be very effective so you want to be as effective um in marriage as possible so you can be as effective in sharing the gospel as possible when you are married that's that's the word that is the story guys um that is the recap on the story of isaac and rebecca so thank you for sticking with me this long we do have an offer now um so basically i've had a lot of you guys reach out to me and it's basically always been about kingdom marriage like I've done so many other <laughs> videos about other bible stories um but the ones that everyone seems to resonate with the most um is about kingdom marriage waiting for this you guys have had your own personal experiences with God about you know this this process that you're going through and the thing that I keep hearing this that comes through from basically everyone is it's so nice to see that there's somebody else who's going through this and who's talking about this stuff. And I'm not the only one because I thought I was crazy. Um, and so I've had this on my heart for a fair while now, actually. I started thinking about this about a year ago. And I think today is the day to share it with you guys. Um, I would like to open up the opportunity um, to have anyone who's going on this journey to meet up 
in like a Zoom format um, once a week for eight weeks, starting in a month from now. So uh, this will be an opportunity for us to prepare our characters for marriage. We'll be going through um, a bit of Bible study around some topics regarding kingdom marriage um, and, and what it takes to prepare for it. So we'll be preparing our characters for marriage. We'll be praying together for wisdom and for God's timing for the whole process. And it'll be just a really encouraging godly community to have on this topic. So we can connect, we can ask questions, we can pray with each other. That is my vision for this group. Um, and as far as I can tell, it's God's vision for this group as well. So if this is something that might interest you, um, let me just tell you some of the topics that we might be discussing. Um, First of all, are you the spouse that you want to marry? Um, another one is what even is marriage, like from a biblical perspective? Um, spiritual gifts, like go into that a bit more. Are you practicing them now? Um, are you serving in your local church? Um, and just a few other things like that. So we'll be going through eight of these topics, um, one topic per week. They'll probably be an hour, two hours maximum. <laughs> I'm going to cap it off at two hours maximum for a Zoom session each week. Um, so if you are interested in this, and this will be completely free, this is my ministry that God has placed in my heart and I, I don't want to charge anyone for it, um, but it will be taking quite a bit of my my time to prepare and to host and to chat with you guys and to hear your stories and and to go through this so do understand that this is a big commitment time wise financially for me to be doing for you guys um and i, I hope you appreciate that um and i yeah i just i really invite you to enjoy this so if this is something that you're interested in that you think you'll find value in being a part of um please email me the email address is the one below. So email me at that email address that's below. Um, email me the the weight in in brackets if you can. Um, so the weight Bible study is what we're calling this. This is going to be a Bible study called the weight preparing our hearts for kingdom marriage. That is the purpose of this thing. So if you want to get in on it, please email me once again the weight Bible study email it to the email address below and I'd like for you guys I need to put a cutoff time for this so we can actually get it started so I know how much interest there is if there isn't much interest at all then we won't do this but if there is enough interest um we'll get it started so I need you guys to email me by the end of July so you have two weeks from the time that this video comes out so the last day of July is the cutoff date um <clears throat> and then we'll actually be kicking this um, group off sometime in the week of the 14th of August. So yeah, if you could email me, uh, just type the weight in the email, um, the weight Bible study. If you're interested in getting in on this group, um, please email me by the end of July and we'll be starting two weeks after that sometime in the week of Sunday, the 14th of, of August. Um, and we'll be going for two months after that until around about the the middle of October. Okay, so uh, just so you know, there will be limited spaces, um, so you might want to get in quick, and maybe just give me a little bit of, um, like, no more than a paragraph or two. If you'd like, you can just tell me a little bit about your story, why you're interested in the group, what your weight situation has been like so far, something like that. I'd like to hear about it. Okay, um, I will be praying about who to let into this group just in case there are too many because I can't work with too many people. It won't, I won't have the ability to work with too many people at one time. Um, but yeah, if you're interested, pray about it um, and send me an email and let me know. Thank you so much. Um, I really hope that this video has been really helpful and inspiring to you. And um, let me know in the comments below if it has. Please share this with a friend who you think um, this might be useful or helpful too. Um, thank you so much. I really appreciate you guys and I hope to meet you guys really soon. All right. See you next week. Bye.